we were we could not find any compelling evidence that under any matrix criteria of frequency, temperature, and duration was actually Jiro protective. Welcome to House of Longevity. Now let's get into it. Okay, let's let's pivot and talk oxidative stressors for a minute. Okay, we we see everyone on Instagram jumping in cold tubs. If you think, okay, well, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something hard. I'm going to uh, you know have this formatic stressor. When in reality, I mean, like Alan Aragon just uh, you know was talking recently about the paper that just came out saying that it potentially blunts muscle growth or hypertrophy. I think the evidence is pretty good that it does indeed blunt hypertrophy. And I just use it as an example because there's a lot of throwing the word longevity around with yeah. it, right? This is a hormetic stressor. And the reason I use it is because this is something that still, although quelling inflammation and blunting the hypertrophic response, like that's one thing, but also too much reactive oxygen species, like too much stress. But again, the point is, is sometimes we look at these hormetic stressors and although they build resilience and they're good, I mean, there's clearly a line. And we live in this world right now where we've got, you know, with all due respect to him, I love the guy, like, you know, Jocko and guys like that that are just like, push harder, push harder, push harder, push harder. And if I look at going in a sauna at 220 degrees and then going in my cold plunge, I'm crafting my entire life around creating stress. No, it's the classic Goldilocks phenomenon, right? It's a, it's a not too much and a not too little. And I don't think we know the answer. You know, going back to what you said about the longevity component here, uh, I have now looked on, we do this every couple of years. We'll go back and revisit our internal white papers on various topics. And the first time we did an internal white paper on cold immersion was late 2019 and early 2020. This was when I was kind of just getting ready to go out to Norway for that Limitless mm -hmm. series. And obviously there was this, you know, big component of cold exposure in that. And, you know, we did, we looked at all the literature that was available at the time and came to the conclusion that there was no longevity, meaning no lifespan benefit, didn't really get into health span, that no lifespan benefit from cold exposure, whereas there was a possible to probable uh, lifespan benefit from heat exposure. We revisited that analysis now, three years later. So early 2023 and came to the same conclusion. We were, we could not find any compelling evidence that cold exposure under any matrix criteria of frequency, temperature, and duration was actually Jiro protective. Hmm. Now we did find evidence that it can reduce inflammation. Um, and we did find evidence that it could improve mood uh, and psychological well-being. And I think those things can be very important. I think this is one of those things where the burden of evidence in the non-randomized data is so strong, it's becoming hard to ignore. Right. So, so you know, if, if the data showed that sauna versus non-sauna was like a 5% improvement in mortality, it would be hard to get that excited about it. But when you look at the largest published series on this, you see a benefit in all-cause mortality, a relative, absolute, pardon me, a relative risk reduction of 40% and an absolute risk reduction of like 18%. Those are, those are high numbers. Those are ridiculous numbers. I think based on the research, the MED is four sessions, 20 minutes, 80 degrees Celsius. Dry, wet. There's the much more literature on dry. Um, so the, you know, the precautionary principle would say if you have access to a dry sauna, that's where we have reams and reams and reams of data. So it's probably where it goes. But look, if you think about what the mechanism of action is. Yeah, I was going to ask you next. Is it heat shock proteins? Is it something I else? I think it's many things. I think it's heat shock proteins. I think it's nitric oxide. I think it's like literally vascular tone, right? Reduction in blood pressure. Um, it's an you know, increase in heart rate and cardiac output. So there's a bit of an exercise benefit. Um, I don't know if BDNF, I think BDNF has been measured. I can't recall. That could be another uh, potential benefit. So brain, my guess is it's BDNF brain derived neurotrophic factor. factor. Yeah. I think it's probably half a dozen things that are all moving in the right direction. Yeah. I've become like really optimistic on this. And I think it's, uh, I think it's very promising. The more toxic you are, the more chemicals you'll release into your bloodstream during a sauna session. 
This is why it's helpful to take antioxidants like glutathione to help flush those chemicals into the liver and out of the body. Channel partner ProHealth Longevity, a supplement company focused on empowering its customers to proactively manage their health, has more than 100 products, including glutathione. Click the link in the description and use coupon code STARK to save 15% on your purchase. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And check out one of these videos next.